Who is Noah Foster? Well, he's just a simple man and a lifelong fan of wrestling. And he is the defender of the art of cruiserweight wrestling. Giving you the latest action in cruiserweight wrestling. A man who thinks that the cruiserweights should never, ever be an afterthought. And others have joined his crusade. He defends those who take depth-defying leaps and produce all-out action. All in the name of entertainment. All in the name of of helping growing this wrestling community together. We are the spark for change, whether it was from the days of WCW until now. This is courage. This is determination. And this is passion. NoDQ.com presents 205 Live Matters. I'm Noah Foster, and I approve this message. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just a simple search man, and my name is Noah Foster. And welcome again to another episode of 205 Live Matters, episode 40. First off, thank you to Page Different, James. Hubert, member of Team Indie DQ, leader of Indie Force for the Wrestling Rundown, for that tremendous narrated caption of my passion and reason why I run this series, and will always believe that 205 Live matters, as well as Cruiserweight Wrestling. Thank you for that, good sir. Stay tuned, folks. Episode 50, I'm sure we'll do another special from somebody within Team Indie DQ or the 205 Live crew. My respect to both Con and James for all they do. Anyway, this week marks really the reset, the rebirth of 205 Live, officially merging itself under the XD brand, and we'll get more into that shortly. But first, allow you, of course, to introduce you to my co-host. We are the Simple Holiday, because he is a family man. He is an astonishing wrestling trivia of mine, as well as an overall seer of Cruiserweight Wrestling, then, now, and forever. He recently got into the YouTube community himself. Go check out his channel. He gives you a lot of simple breaks, basically, because that's all his videos are about. Give me a little break and a little insight in his thoughts on wrestling then now forever it's of course my good friend here at the holiday the family man mr christopher mace chris how are you oh doing good it's a beautiful day outside so i figured i'd just stay outside and we can talk about some wrestling for a little bit so nice and folks don't don't, don't let the you know ambient lighting uh body you here okay it's nice outside it's nice to change up once in a while as long as the all is coming across and again on NoDQ's uh, YouTube channel, we're registered at 360p. You want this in full HD, please follow my silly YouTube channel. But with that, hey, you hear us, you see us, let's go ahead and talk about some Cruiserweight Wrestling. So again, this basically was the first Duel 5 Live after the WWE Draft. What stupid wild card 2.0 bullshit that was, worth forgetting. But I digress. Anyway, so we start off with still the GM, thankfully. And I'm okay with that, Drake Maverick. Introducing us into the 205 Live brand now that the WWE Draft is officially over. And he discusses all the draft picks that impacted the 205 Live roster, which included 205 Live Originals, the episode one, Drew Gulak, all the best, good sir. Akira Tozawa, ha, who came in a little later. Up and coming 205 Live, Humberto Carrillo, the Lucha House Party, and Drake Maverick himself. Gulak, Maverick, and Lucha House Party were drafted to Friday Night SmackDown on Fox, while Carrillo and Akira were drafted to Monday Night Raw. Good luck to both of you men. And everybody also, because the main roster... Ugh. But it looks like Drake Maverick struck a free agent deal where he can still work as a 205 Live GM, which brings us into the philosophy and the idea of 205 Live going forward. He thanks all of them for what they've done for the 205 Live brand, growing into the most exciting hour of television still to this day. And I still agree with that to an extent, especially since NXT is no longer an hour. Anyway, he also said he has struck a deal now with NXT general manager William Regal, and over the coming weeks you will see athletes 205 pounds and under from the NXT roster working full-time under the 205 Live banner, 
coming after, of course, the NXT Cruiserweight Championship currently held by Leo Rush, who will also be included in this as well. He will be on the brand next week. But basically, he also says that he loves the next man up mentality level that all the Cruiserweights bring, and he hopes to see the same thing brought by the NXT going forward. So with that, let's just get right into this week's episode of 205 Live. M&A from Indianapolis, our new announcing going forward, two-person booth. Looks like they're sticking with that. Well, you know, Aiden English and Tom Phillips. This I'm okay with. Byron Saxton, all the best in whatever you're doing. He's probably doing a main event with Mickey James. I got no damn clue. And we start off, <laughs> hey, I'm just calling it like I see it. Main event somehow still exists, and I don't even know how that exists. But, uh, but don't worry, people. Owen Finch reports those main event shows, so you go check out his channel. He'll tell you what's going on in main event. Cause we have no idea. <laughs> oh, I'll sum it up for you. He does that one sentence. This show is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree. F every week. Bullshit. Anyway, main event should die. Uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the opening match was, of course, a robbery still in the making. While... Mike Canellas, which we're going to get into more later, was not part of this show, and his future is undetermined. But we do know the future of one person. We don't really know what to go right now. Jack Gallagher, finally trying to get his comeuppance against Lee Brian Kendrick. And they start off by showcasing how this all came to be, recapping their match from last month, where it was Lee Brian Kendrick and Jack Gallagher with a kill to at ringside, and Lee Brian Kendrick snapped. Basically whacking Jack Gallagher with a Kendall stick, on the name of You Will Respect Me. What does that sound familiar? But anyway, he's doing better where he's at now. But I digress. And I thought this was an okay match. But in the end, Jack Gallagher fell to the mind games of the man with a plan, the Brian Kendrick. Tough break. Before I talk more about this match, Chris, your thoughts on this match and the message from Drake Maverick in regards to 205 Live then and now and going forward. I like it. I think we needed a reshift in the 205 Live brand. Like I said, we only had a limited amount of stars on 205 Live that could appear. And we were already, they were already getting people from NXT like Swerve and like Angel Garza. They were already borrowing people from NXT. So I like how now we've incorporated the storyline. Okay, well, our biggest stars have been drafted. So now we're having a dinner we and we're going to have this deal we're going to have stars from NXT showing our 205 live and so they can rotate talent at least the storyline makes great sense that would make perfect sense especially with the Cruiserweight title being the NXT Cruiserweight Championship now right this match this first match very I thought it was pretty damn good I love the story going here with the woman Jack Kendrick what happened a month ago on 205 Live, and it got to the point now where he was grabbing that kendo stick towards the end. He was thinking about using it. He wanted to get payback on him and stuff like that. He wasn't worried about winning the match at that point. He just wanted to get retribution, and it ended up costing him, and then he got hit with the slice of bread, Teb, or slice of bread, too, and that was it. Brian Kendrick won. The only thing I was kind of surprised about, we didn't see an appearance from Mike Kanellis because it seemed like they had that partnership last week. I would have wanted them to continue following up on that storyline, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out later on. Yeah, fair enough, because we don't know. Is he be real or is he going to be gone? By the way, I love how the sun just emanates over you. People, he is the holiday. The sun shines through him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the case where, like, I can't see you. Yeah, the sun's literally over your head. <laughs> He's a good-hearted man. You uh, can tell. Well. He's not Halo. Eh, deal with it. <sighs> anyway, uh, yeah, I thought this was a pretty good match. I mean, it didn't even start off as a match. Jack Gallagher, you know, he seemed all normal and stuff like that. By the way, I love the new SmackDown set with the 205 Live colors. Really works well. This set's so much better than Raw, but I digress. Anyway, they had a good match. Pre-match attack, though, the... Uh, Jack Gallagher goes right after D. Brian Kendrick. He even pulls out a uh, Kendall stick, it seems. But D. Brian Kendrick capitalizes, and again, it was, the bell never rang, so no disqualification. Following this, they had a nice exchange in the ring. A domino stretch for a while, D. Brian Kendrick in control. Jack Gallagher, he comes back with a little bit of fury, including that limited to trying to go for the McKillian headbutt. Didn't stick it, but he did hit the gentleman's drop kick. But frustration set in. He saw the Kendall stick. He wanted to get his vengeance. But Jack Gallagher has not been on a strong streak lately. He really needed the win here. But unfortunately, bitterness and anger got the best of him. Or the Ryan Kendrick, for example. Because we bring the Kendall stick in. The ref trying to stop him from using it. I will disqualify you. Jack Gallagher seemed hesitant at first. Because again, is he heel? Is he face? Does the heelish theme? Nobody knows the direction that's going. 
But basically, it led to, you know, the Bank Canada taking the advantage, getting rid of the candlestick, and dropped Toe Hall into the turnbuckles, sliced bread, one, two, three, and the Bank Canada with a subtle relief smile, and, you know, does his arm thing, and then gets out of the ring. Jack Gallagher looks despondent. Jack Gallagher needs to do something. The Bank Canada trying to prove a point that you will respect me, and I deserve a shot at the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Now newly named, now under Leo Rush. We'll see if the Bank Canada puts his name in the hat. Drake Maverick's watching. Okay. Following that, as you did speak about some of the athletes we might see going forward more often now, they highlight a bail package for Angel Gaza. Show mm-hmm. him out how many pairs of pants you can expect him to rip off because that is one of yeah. his trademarks. And also, he's a very dynamic, charismatic athlete in the ring, third generation, one of the highlight members of the Gaza family, though not to begin to say he's the best up-and-comer. And the cousin of a brother, Julio, who's now on Monday Night Raw, where those two just came up a great one-on-one mutual respect bout among the family. We'll see what Andrew Garza brings. Expect him to come soon. Then comes the most ridiculous portion of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the first draft picks in the WWE Bollywood Draft. What the hell the WWE Bollywood Draft? The Singh brother. I was confused, too. <laughs> Okay, who else would fall into that category? Jinder Mahal? Uh, what? Mm. What is this bull crap? And Tom Phillips just seems so high on the scene, bro. It's bullet, 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 being like, hey, they're the best. They're the number one. Uh, just because you're the only one does not make you the best. It totally also makes you the worst. You had no competition. But Tom just illustrated, well, now they're the best team on 205 since Lucha House Price now on SmackDown because there's no teams. Yet. There's logic in that because he is the only one. But give me a break, man. You're speaking like Gene Oakland. Are you kidding me? And this was an enhancement match, basically. Welcome to Sing Brothers back to 205 Live. More showing their character than athleticism. But they got some good moves in, too. Even the uh, jobbers, Jason, Justin Alexander and Justin uh, Marles. Might as well call them the Justins. Good grief. Uh, basically, they got a few shots in. They even did the bully bully dance. But in the end, uh, Tom puts over the... The Singh Brothers. I keep calling them the Bollywood Boys for some reason. Maybe they should be called that. And we get light camera, Bollywood action, spinning heel kicks, dual super kicks. Who do you think you are, the Young Bucks? And basically, their fans are now known as Bollywood Blast with the big elbow over the bat breaker for the one, two, three, and they dance galore in and out of the ring in front of Tom Phillips, who is ecstatic, and he is just like, okay, good, you gotta win, but come on, all this time you've been this composed Bollywood studio. You're going to need to do a lot more than You're calling yourself the best tag team right now when there's no new tag teams established. And truth be told, they were on episode one. So I give them credit for that. And this was also a showcase about the cruiserweights that have been on 205 Live since episode one and still are. Jack Gallagher, Lee Brown Kendrick, and uh, yes, the Singh Brothers even, because they were in the very first tag match ever in 205 Live on episode one against Gulak and Nice. But hey, the Singh Brothers seem to be having fun. They're demonstrating a lot of character, which of course WWE is always very fond of. And they showed off some good action. We'll see what's next for them. Do you have any further thoughts on this entire match in section? And the Singh Brothers in general? I, I, like I said, the Singh brothers, as silly as they can be, at least they're entertaining what they're doing and everything. Now let's cheer. You want to say, you number one, you're the best right now. Let's see them go up against Lorcan and Birch. That's what I want to see them go up against now. Let's see how you do against them boys in a tag match. Like I said, you're going to beat Jobber team. That's fine. But let's see if you go up against real team. We've seen Lorcan and Birch. They got two victories on 205 Live as a tag team. They're undefeated as a tag team on there. Let's see you go up against them. And then you, if you can beat them, then you can claim that you best. Because, like I said, Lorcan and Birch pretty much the only consistent tag team as of late on 205 Live now. Yeah. Yeah. And NXT. Keep in mind, these people are going to be working between both brands now. But some people from NXT are going to be working full time at 205 Live. That means you might see them every week. But... Before we get more into that, let's go into NXT, where they talk about the new NXT Cruiserweight Champion returning to the 205 Live brand next week, Leo Rush. He feels amazing. Now he's the leader of the Cruiserweights. He's basically the best Cruiserweight right now in all WWE because he is the NXT Cruiserweight Champion. He returns to 205 Live uh, next week, and with the Cruiserweight division wide open, who knows what's going to happen. But then we get into our main event, and this is where 205 Live still seems to kill it practically every week. 
They did it again. Yes. Two originals from episode one, and one of the latest up and covers to the 205 Live brand, basically carrying it since Cedric left, Only Lorcan. It was Ari Davari versus Tony Nunes versus Only Lorcan, a triple threat match to stake your claim in the 205 Live division, as well as stake your claim towards the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. And there was a lot of interesting dynamics and chemistry here, all three out to prove a point. You basically knew who were heels going into this and who was the face. It was like a two-on-one handicap in those scenarios at the time with the strange alliances. And they said on commentary, it's wide open in this cruiserweight division now. It's like a reset. But the thing is, Tony Nese, Ari Devari, they both had good starts this year, but it's been a rough second half. When you think about Ari Devari going in undefeated this year, losing his opportunity at the Cruiserweight Championship against Tony Nese, the former champion at Money in the Bank. Look at Tony Nese and how he grew himself this year in the beginning, going all the way through the Cruiserweight Championship tournament, beating Cedric Alexander in a highlight match of 205 Live this year. Might be on my list, you don't know. And he became Cruiserweight Champion at WrestleMania against the unstoppable, it seemed, best kept secret 205 Live, Buddy Murphy, who I might add they're doing nothing with right now, since the whole Roman Who Done storyline's over. Really vague. I'll talk more about grievances later. Maybe I'll do that in simple stances. And basically, since then, he has been lost since losing his Cruiserweight title to Drew Gulak back at stomping grounds, even being so much as just guinea pigging on Gulak. It was really an opportunity for Nice to stand up for himself to prove a point, and Ari Devari trying to gain some momentum, and only Lorgan, who's no stranger to the Cruiserweight title, challenging it against Drew Gulak, I saw live, at SummerSlam. Only to lose that as well. All three of these men, they were out to prove a point. You were really wondering who needed the win more here. And all three men bought like all three needed it. Chris, tell me for your thoughts on this match and the winner. And what do you think right now is the chances of the winner getting an NXT Championship opportunity? This match was amazing. I've had to watch it back three times because I thought this that damn good in the shuffle with stuff you know but this match was a definitely the best way to do a triple threat match like i said there was storytelling involved you got to one point where you know you got Dabari trying to talk to tony come on now you gotta take him take him down come on get him get him they're working together you didn't know what was going on because you know t knee still seemed like you know without gulak he was like okay what am i you know you didn't know for sure at first was he going to be more towards like a baby face again was it going to be more towards a heel and I like this side of Tony Nese, you know, like this more aggressive side with him and stuff. I like that in the storytelling here. And Lorcan is pretty much, he, he can have great matches. And like I said, I think this is one of his best matches since he had the match with Senator Alexander. Because, like I said, he had storytelling. It wasn't where he had an incredible match five days prior and he wasn't selling any injuries or anything like that. He was doing really good. And Dabari as a heel... I, I, I was very damn impressed with the match. Tony Nese winning was the right decision because now I really am ready to see Leo Rush versus Tony Nese. I'm really actually intrigued by that matchup and the difference. And let's see what happens with that because that can continue to Tony Nese trying to build his way back up to getting that Cruiserweight Championship again. And now that Leo Rush has it, it's not Gulak. It's going to be different for him to fight, and I'm ready to see it again. I'm ready to see if Tony Nese can once again be on top of the mountain or could Leo Rush prove to everybody that this wasn't a fluke, that he just didn't have a couple of great matches, that he can be the consistent Cruiserweight champion that that brand deserves. All right, fair enough. So with that being said, Tony Nese, it seemed like he was also back to his old stick, proving why he is the premier athlete. I haven't done this for a while. He counted all eight of the packs, giving you eight reasons, eight reasons why I am the premier athlete and deserve to be the NXT Cruiserweight Champion. And we get right into the match, and, ah, gee, this went all over. It mostly seemed like a handicap match at first, as Ari Dabari and Tony Nese, who know each other very well, especially being led under Drew Gulak for a period of time, and also being original since episode one. Keep that in mind. They basically interchangeably tag-teamed in and out against Oni Lorcan to the point Beat down, one's lounging, the other one falls suit. Control C, Control V. Aha! And basically, Oni, he gets some momentum back when he clotheslines both men after it looked like they were going for a tag team maneuver. 
And then we get some uh, tandem teamwork for a while still. Arya, though, he tries to roll up Nice. This is the first little moment in the match. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And remember for himself, man. And remember for himself. Which led to a weird moment. You can tell right now that Arya Daivari was definitely enlisting the heat from the crowd, proving why he has a heel. Further character development, bringing the crowd into the match. Good job, Arya Daivari. And basically, at one point, Nice and Oni were working together over Arya Daivari. And then Oni basically, he and Nice were duking it out for a moment. He goes for a suicide dive, gets caught by Nice, kick up on the apron. Not a bad move. We got to wrestle for a while, kind of like a reset to the match. And then Devari, he comes in on nowhere. Wicked reverse DDT. Ouch. Oni Lorcan, though, he unleashes Fury. By the way, as soon as Oni Lorcan comes in the ring, he's already channeling like the sun, kind of like over your head, or a spirit bomb, basically. Shout out to those that like DBZ. Yes, I used to watch cartoons. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yep. Dragon Ball. All right, Spirit Bomb. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Bring bring the power of the sun down, as they were saying. And he goes on mm-hmm. up the custody for a while, only for uh, Nice and Dabari basically working against Oni again, getting the heat from the crowd, Dabari is, while they work over Oni, just really like, hey, you want to come in here and do something? You got something to say, say it in my face. You can't do anything. You slobs are out there sitting in the seats. You can't do a damn thing. You got booze galore. Good job, Dabari. Uh, then they did a suspended vertical suplex, I think for a good near 10 seconds on Oni Lorgan. All the blood rushing to his head. Yeesh. And then some little high five. And then Dabari turns on Nice. Go figure. Why would you even trust Dabari for five seconds, let alone a second, as Tom Phillips puts mm-hmm. over? Dabari's in it for himself. But then following that, Dabari and Oni, they're working over on each other. And Oni, he comes back and unleashes Fury. Literally... Reckless abandonment, and I agree how they put it. Launching himself off the middle rope, then launching himself off the top rope, then launching himself off the freaking post on the both men to the floor. What the hell's wrong with you, you Boston brawling fool? Anyway, following this, he brings both men in the ring. He channels Fury. He claps. He gets the crowd into it. He points at both men, goes at them in the corners, does that crazy yell. And literally runs at them with hip attacks, running attacks. Gets a double blockbuster pulled off on both men. Goes for a pin on both. Still not enough. Nice then, he gets hanged out. And then we get springboard moonsault by Tony Nice, one of his staples here. And then we get Dabari breaking it up, literally leaping over the ref, same in the match. And then we get a kick and exchange between Dabari and Nice, while Oni is incapacitated out on the floor. And wicked Yuranagi by Davari. He got him up there. Cover still not enough. Only he's coming into play while Davari and Nisa are still working on each other. Davari control. Davari very aware. He super kicks Nisa. He super kicks Oni's teeth out. And basically, he literally rips Nisa off the freaking. I still don't know what they call that. He literally rips Nisa off the top rope onto Oni. Hey, why not use your opponent as a weapon? Tries to cover Oni. Mm-hmm. Still not enough. Very enduring. Following this, though, he goes for the hammerlock um, lariat, only to get caught in half and half by Oni Lorcan, because Nice countered that. And then it's Nice and Oni. Oni goes for a half and half on Nice. He counters it, stands on his feet, and then double stomps to the chest. And then out of nowhere, before he goes for the pin on Oni, freaking Frostberry flops. Seamless. He cleared those ropes like it was nothing onto our advisor to the floor. Then he goes for his 450, only to crash and burn. He really needs to stop relying on that move, because when it doesn't stick, you suffer. Then he finally gets a half and half, only Lurkin does until he needs, but Davari, he comes in, breaks up the fall. We go for open palm strike, though, from Nice to Davari, who is setting up for the Persian Splash, obviously. And following this, Lurkin, he comes into play. We get a superplex spot, because why not? And then Nice, he comes into play. It looks like we're going to get a roll through onto Oni Lorgan for a cover. Nope, he rolls for even more, sets him up, and finishes him off with that freaking sunset driver. Pins Oni Lorgan. One, two, three. Tony Nice wins. A huge win for Tony Nice. Not over one of the originals of 205 Live, but for the latest up and comer and proving a point why he is a premier athlete. Then he literally yanks the headset off in English and says, I want to personally congratulate Leo Rush on becoming the NXT Cruiserweight Champion. But be aware, I am coming back to take what is mine. Statement made. And that was the end of the show. So again, a stellar, stellar main event. 
showcasing all three of these men how hungry they wanted the opportunity to prove I am worthy of championship contention. And Tony Nese, who we don't know where he stands, trying to find himself, looks like he's back to his original roots. Premier athlete wanting to lead the cruiserweight division. Now, whether he's doing it for the people or himself, that's hard to say. I think it's more for himself. And as far as only Lorcan and Aradvari goes, they feuded before. Hey, the line's perfect on your head now. They feuded before. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me to see these two go one on one again. But I thought it was a very stellar match, and I'm looking forward to whether it kicks off next week in NXT or kicks off officially on next week's Friday's 205 Live. Because guess what, folks? It's here to stay. Suck it, haters. Yep. Anyway, so that was this week's episode of 205 Live. Let's go ahead and do as we always do and rate this week's episode. So this week, it's funny. It's like this is the second episode now on Friday nights officially after SmackDown goes off the air. And they're still exclusively on the WWE Network. The first premiere episode of Friday Night SmackDown on Fox, no 205 Live. Wasn't sure what was going to happen. And then next week, we get some showcase tag matches, and we're not sure who, what's going to happen for anybody. You even saw the look in Gulak and Nisa's face. It was like Gulak kind of knew, though, what was to come. As we kind of saw him still into what was going to happen with him this Friday. Always a constant worker. I truly wish the best for him. Please push this guy in the move. Set up Gulak versus Daniel Bryan. Fuck Roman Daniel Bryan tag team. It's stupid, stupid, stupid. Anyway, but this show was truly the reset as we got original showcase heavily and on 205 Live, as well as a couple of up-and-comers. But we also got an idea of what to expect for the future, as now 205 Live and NXT, they seem to be fully merged. And we're going to see more NXT talents going forward, working full-time. It was the setup to bigger and brighter things, I feel like. And again, while the buy thing was ridiculous, I'll admit, it was entertaining. And the Ryan Kinnick still have to prove his point. It might be the Ryan Kinnick and Tony facing each other in a contenders match. Because both men got a right to, I feel like. Great Mavericks to the GM, and another incredible main event. I enjoyed this show overall. Uh, it was definitely a little more than average. Typical format, three matches. I'll be generous here, and I'll give it, because of the main event, I'll give it three and three quarters. Chris, what about you? What would you rate this week's episode of 205 Live? Uh, if, if it was just the main event show, it'd be 4.75. It was just the main event alone, but you have the rest of the show to think about. So I'm going to be a little more generous. I'm going to give it a four. I thought the first match was really well done with the storytelling that continued that storyline with Brian Kendrick and the gentleman. Second match, like I said, had its entertaining point, but hasn't didn't really establish the future of the Volley Boys, what they're going to do. And the main event, I thought, was like really well done. It was really damn good triple threat. I mean, I had to go watch it three times just because I was very entertained with it. So I'm going to give the show a four as a whole. But that main event, anything else, go watch that main event. That was a damn good triple threat match. I would recommend to watch that. All right, fair enough. Well, the bottom line is this. 205 Live is NXT, and we will see how that plays out as early as next week with now Drake Maverick and William Regal working in tandem, and I look forward to that. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into some simple stances where we talk about fantasy book and basically critique and analyze the Cruiserweight brand and 205 Live. Let's go ahead and start with these draft picks, and let's look at who's been used so far how they've been used, and what we think might come from those that haven't been used. So, again, the draft impacted 205 Live with the following people being drafted. I just said draft a lot of times. I know. I'm redundant. It happens. Drew Gulak got drafted to SmackDown on Fox. Lucha House Party got drafted to SmackDown on Fox. Humberto Carrillo got drafted to Money Night Raw on USA. Akira Tozawa got drafted to Money Night Raw on USA. And Drake Maverick is apparently drafted to SmackDown on Fox. So here's my quick thoughts on just what I think could happen for all five of these men. Gulak, don't you fucking make him enhancement squash talent. You got the fight <laughs> of Zaro, Daniel Bryan, Shorty Gable. That fucking sucks. This guy can be a main event, can put people over to the moon, and deserves to be a champion. Not only is he an incredible map-based wrestler, he is an incredible character, taking good with the bad, constantly evolving. This guy is worthy of the fucking main event of SmackDown, and you should be using him in a feud with Daniel Bryan, not this Roman tag team bullshit where tag team wrestling is still fucking irrelevant in WWE. But I digress. Now, as far as everybody else goes, Lucha House Party, okay, that's another tag team. Let's look at the tag team division. You got Lucha House Party. You got the New Day. There's your first three-on-three three right there. Wouldn't surprise me. Unless Kofi turns heel. I can only hope. 
We also got Heavy Machinery. We got The Revival. We got The B Team. Can't believe that's still a fucking thing. And mm-hmm. I'm saying they got a big tag team roster. The current chess Revival got a lot of competition. But don't treat The Revival and Lucha House Party like you did on Monday Night Raw with ridiculous stipulations. You want to be more sports oriented, make it seem like athletic competition. Make me care about tag team wrestling again. Because as far as I'm concerned, the only tag team wrestling that matters, and I'm going to hit a black note on, I'm going to hit an a, a audience on this, AEW. There, I said it. Anyway, Roberto Carrillo, let's see. Who's on Monday Night Raw, and what can Roberto Carrillo benefit from? Well, there's always that United States Championship with AJ Styles. You squashed it, Alexander, because Vince was like, hey, it's too small. Vince, you're a fucking idiot. Anyway, mm-hmm. for the, you know, he could have great feudings with uh, Ray Mysterio. I don't was Ray drafted to SmackDown. I don't fucking remember the draft. No, he was on. He got drafted to Raw. Okay, good. So you can do Ray Mysterio, Brother Carrillo. That could be an incredible match, bringing up the up and comer. We also could potentially see a Brother Carrillo versus Andrade Cien Almas, which I think will be an awesome feud itself. Push Andrade to the moon. I hope they do a lot with a Brother Carrillo. And then you got Akira Tozawa, who's on Raw. Don't you fucking do Titus Worldwide again. That's all I'm going to say about that. Because honestly, I don't know what the hell they could do with Akira Tozawa besides put him somehow up against the OC. Which would be absolutely pointless because the OC is a stupid name and absolutely fucking irrelevant. And then Drake Maverick. The one positive thing you could do with him. Pair him with EC3. Give EC3. Mm -hmm. Is in a fucking reset, you stupid morons. But Man, EC3's like, on Raw, though. What? EC3's on Raw. I thought he was dra- Oh, he's still on Raw? Yeah. Fuck! Well, then never mind. As far as Street Maverick goes, uh, well, if you're not going to bring back general managers, I honestly don't know what you can do with this guy, because Drake Maverick can wrestle, but he's better in a manager role. He proved it at 205 Live GM. By the way, a little bit of a notice. You know we have not seen since this draft the 20 percent tile at all. I'm so yeah. freaking happy about that. I hope it is fucking retired. Especially because I guess Carmella and our troop had a fallout. All the best to both of them. Uh, anyway, as far as Maverick goes, he's the only unknown I can't figure up right now to do something with. And sorry, not sorry for the rants and how I feel about the main roster. But even you have to agree up to Hell in the Cell, the main roster still sucks. And the future is not looking promising if you're still going to have blood money and turn the W title into MMA. There, I said it. Fuck you, haters. Anyway, ugh, I feel good now. Uh, Chris, what is your thoughts on all the draft picks? You we feel killed? better now. I feel fine. Everything's fine. Anyway, what is your thoughts on all the draft picks made from the 205 Life roster? And what do you see happening, potentially, for all of them that could be in their best interest? You got five. Oh, uh, Drake Maverick might be getting lost in the shuffle there if he's like he still be the general manager of two or five live, but that he may be on his role maybe just simple as he's trying to scout out new talent on SmackDown and maybe join two or five live. That may be the only thing I could think of. Um, Humberto, that's a real shame. I think, like I said, I wanted him to push, get pushed to the moon and slow burn all the way to WrestleMania to win the Cruiserweight Championship, but him being on Raw, that's gonna just blow that opportunity out of the water i hope they know what they're doing with him on that brand akira dazao he's already been on raw i don't have any faith of what they're gonna do with akira dazao what a talent they got and they're not gonna know what the hell to do with him on raw um lucha house lucha house about, about to call them lucha brothers lucha house, i know lucha house party not, well i was thinking of another promotion we're not talking about now so lucha house brother oh my god I just we already know who they are since we're talking about aw so you brought up aw and made me think about it for a second and so anyway so lucha house party my bad hey hey i watch all forms of wrestling everything on wrestling so sometimes yeah. it gets confusing so anyways i they've already been on raw and smackdown before they're pretty much hopefully like i said maybe they do end up breaking them up and having lince lince dorado who started shining on his own last few single matches he had that was very impressive uh so like i said i was hoping they would get to maybe continue to do that storyline on smackdown do not do any crap like he did when Lars sullivan was there before we got injured of having a three-on-one match don't do any of that crap that serves no purpose for any of them um, I'm hoping I, I'm hoping the one they push the most is Humberto, and I hope they do something with him. Just do not do what you did with Cedric Alexander and AJ Styles with that U.S. title. That goes BS 
both those matches they had, even the second one was a little bit better because it was a little longer, still didn't help anything. So, Well, we both know the mid-card titles are irrelevant in WWE. Let's just state the facts. The IC and the U.S. title, they haven't mattered since John Cena had the open challenge, and the last IC champ that mattered was Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose. John Moxley, AEW. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, as far as Umberto Carrillo goes, let me further your point on that. Who do you think Umberto Carrillo should feud with first? God, Lord. I would have said AJ Styles for the U.S. title. I would I would say he comes out there and have a, they have a match. AJ Styles pretty much just has a match. He wants to show. He wants he challenges anybody from the uh, just got drafted over. He challenges anybody from the back to a match. Alberto comes out. He gets a victory, like he just squeaks by a victory, like an upset victory, maybe a fruit roll up or something along the lines where he squeaks by a victory, get uh, get a non-title match, and then they can build up a feud that way. That's what I would do with him, establish him as you've already had him established as a strong competitor on 205 Live. Let's keep him established as a strong competitor. And then let's pull the trigger. AJ Styles was a good, great U.S. champion. He's a phenomenal wrestler. That's why he's called the phenomenal one. But at some point, use AJ Styles as he's getting closer to winding down his career as well. Let's start using him to elevate these younger stars. You missed the boat with Cedric Alexander. Let's do it with Humberto. Humberto's got a lot of upside to him, so let's do it with Humberto. True, and there's a lot, of, and there's a lot of smaller competitors that Alberto Carrillo can test his skills out with too. One match we haven't seen yet between these two. I want to see Alberto Carrillo versus Ricochet. Or, or like you said, an uh, Andrade, Cianomis. We yeah, still call them by their last names, y'all. Yeah, we care about last names. Fuck Vince in the short-term memory. Anyway, uh, that, yeah, I that would love be to see a good it. feud, though. Yeah, it would be. Do some with Andrade. You have wasted the guy. Jeez. Uh, as far as Drew Gulak goes, who do you want to see him go up against first? I want to see that. I hope the scenario happens where they set up Daniel Bryan versus Nakamura for the IC title. Let Daniel Bryan win the IC title, take it off Nakamura, and then let's build Gulak up and let's have an Intercontinental Championship feud with Daniel Bryan as champion versus Drew Gulak and let Drew Gulak get a big win over Daniel Bryan and become the new Intercontinental Champion. Well, because I believe if Drew Gulak can get a hold of that Intercontinental Championship, he can make that title mean something again. There are certain wrestlers that if they have that title, it actually means something you want to pay attention to. Daniel Bryan will be one of them, but him putting over Drew Gulak as well would also el- not only elevate Drew Gulak, but would also establish him as the future of the wrestling in SmackDown. And so that's what I would want to see happen with them doing. Not what they did on SmackDown with the we, I, I, I didn't. I like the PowerPoint presentation sometimes, but like, let's. That, he's got a more serious character. Let's not go back to what didn't work before. Let's go. Let's keep him where he was at at Two or Five Live before you put him on SmackDown. And let's not use him for blood, money, enhancement, encouragement. All right, Jesus. Yeah. I just, I just thought something though with uh, Drake Maverick. Now this is just a wild scenario. Let's face it, Miz's face. I fucking hate it. He's better. <laughs> there, I said it. He's better as a heel. He was a multiple time Intercontinental Champion. He had his feud with Nakamura. So if you do put it on a face Daniel Bryan, if you're not going to use Gulak towards the IC title, I would put Miz towards the IC title as heel. But somehow you work a way to put Drake Maverick into the fold with him because Drake Maverick is already a great speaker. But the Miz, he owns himself the mic, and he can kind of do what he did with the Mistourage, and honestly, I'd rather see Mistourage than the B-Team. He and Maverick could be a very dynamic duo, with Maverick being the scrappy little guy that's also kind of a manager, but also can kind of do the run-ins for the Miz. So, I feel like Maverick's position is best in some sort of support role, rather than in ring competitor. He can wrestle, but they're not going to do a damn thing with him as a wrestler. Let's just face facts. Because wrestling doesn't matter, sports do, and sports and wrestling can't collide in WWE because Vince hates wrestling and hates the term wrestling. He is simply a promoter there to bring in a lot of money. I get it's a business, but some of these people actually care about wrestling and how they're showcased and don't want to hate their lives or try and do drugs and do whatever they can to get out of their contract, and they don't want to be held up either. Just saying. I wonder how much ec 3 regrets life right now, too, and how many people are actually pissed off at this draft thing, knowing this draft was a complete hoax. Welcome to Wild Card Rule 2.0, people. It is good shit. Fuck you, Vince. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Ugh, I got enough anger out of me. Okay, so so let's let's get you in a better about, move. My simple stance then. Yeah. What 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 is your simple stance? What do you want to talk about? Okay, so we've already established in the past that Roderick Strong's been on 205 Live, right? Yeah. We've established that before. We also established that the NXT Cruiserweight Championship is part of uh, NXT and it's part of 205 Live. We've established that with Leo Rush now being the champion, Renee Branding at NXT. Could we see the possibility, since Roderick Strong did compete in 205 Live and he is under the 205 limit, technically is what they're saying, Right. Could we see him actually defend that NXT North American Championship in a match on 205 Live in, uh, against the 205 Live competitor? I would, I would love I the vehicle to stop driving by, too. Thanks. But... <laughs> it gave me a moment to pause my, <laughs> gave me a moment to pause my thoughts. I would say yes, because, again, now you're going to see NXT talent compete full-time on the 205 Live roster, but you're also going to see the NXT Championship and the 205 Live talent compete also in conjunction with NXT, point be proven. Danny Burge, Oli Lorcan, they had an incredible tag match against Imperium. And that was a hot mm-hmm. listener within the first hour. So I would absolutely love to see the North American title somehow showcased within the 205 Live brand. We know that Roderick Strong, he's got an incredible task ahead of him. But as long as this prophecy is in hold, it's not going to leave him anytime soon. I'm just going to say right now, I do not see Roderick Strong lose in the North American title next week. Despite him not really having a character to him, he is an incredible, strong, hard wrestler. So, yes, I would love to see the North American title somehow incorporated and involved in the 205 Lab brand. Now, as far as we go after it, you're going to have to set up something, Maverick and Regal, where you set up a no one contenders match, and that could be set up on 205 Live, bring an acknowledgement to this NXT title and the NXT brand, as well as what 205 Live can bring you. So the bottom line is this. NXT is not doing well in viewership. They lost over 10% of their actual viewing audience this week almost. They need to find other avenues and increase their out their outreach, okay? And obviously Triple H wants to keep it in full so because he cares about the people that started it from the beginning, been with him since the beginning. But truth be told, as long as you have the WWE in front of it, Vince could be like, we're going to move it out of full cell. And it wasn't surprising that that happens early next year. But as far as your question goes for right now in the short run, yes, I would like to see the North American Tile incorporated in 205 Live. As far as your first match set up, strong as a heel, you need a prominent face. Ah, uh, probably, and they are going to the UK soon. I wouldn't mind seeing Roderick Strong versus Jack Gallagher for that title. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? I got. I would want to see Roderick Strong go over there and let him, since he's been on the brand for, and let him talk about how he's how he's the best and everything like that. And he's come over there and let them set up a North American Championship match. Let him have some kind of feud, whether it's somebody like Only Lorcan. Okay, there are enough history before. Uh, I would say let's set up something with Oni Lorcan. He comes out there, so demand, Oni Lorcan's demanding a title match. They start getting into a little rivalry there, and then they culminate this rivalry and this feud with them two having a match for that North American Championship. But instead, he doesn't want imp- undisputed air interfering or anything like that. So he's going to say, all right, well, I've tried to fight you on NXT. You keep having your boys interfere. I said, why don't we do it on where I go from? Let's go ahead and go to 205 Live, and let's go ahead and have that match there. And then you can have the title match there. And then have Roderick Strong get the clean win. Like I said, let Lorcan have a great showcase against him, but let Roderick Strong ultimately by himself retain the North American Championship. That's what I would do. The brawler versus the man with strongholds. Yep. And the Messiah the Backbreaker. I like it. Yeah, only Lorcan and Roderick Strong, it would make perfect sense because we don't know what's next for only Lorcan, especially since he ate the fall. But again, he still competes in NXT right now as a tag team. And NXT needs to build and elevate their tag team division and bring some of those tag teams on the 205 Live brand to shut the Bollywood boy. Damn it! To shut the Singh brothers up. They're, I'm just calling them Bollywood boys from now on. Fuck it. Uh, anyway, yeah, I can see that happening. That's another potential there, too. But I was more along the lines figured of, okay, you also showcase this in the UK as well because you also have the... They say, like, it's there, but it's not. You have NXT UK, which is also in the NXT banner. And we're seeing firsthand NXT UK talent competing. However, there's some talent that literally just wants to stay within the UK and compete there. Walter, especially. Walter just mm-hmm. wants to compete in his home. That's, he loves his home. Simple as that. That's probably why he wasn't on NXT this week, per se. And yeah. 
I could honestly see them doing something like that where they incorporate an NXT UK talent going after Roderick Strong from North American Talent, which is why I went with a current talent, Jack Gallagher. If you don't do that, maybe Danny Burch, maybe introduce a new name like, I don't know, Kenny Williams, the lucky end. I still think he needs something. And as far as Noam Dar goes, if he's still doing this thing against British Strong Style against Trent Seven, we know what he's doing. But yeah, I, I definitely can see a North American Title match or challenge made at least on 205 Live. And I would love to see that. In fact, since you're not going to bring tag team titles, let's just take a step further. You're not going to bring tag titles in the, in the 205 Live because they just don't have the, 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 crew, the division there, but you got at least one team. Try and build up the tag teams between both brands. Make some incoherent tag teams. Bring the Dusty Cup back and demonstrate it on not only NXT, but 205 Live. That will bring notoriety to both brands as well and also elevate those NXT tag titles because Bobby Fish and Kyle Riley, they're telling out of the way too. Last but say they, they had an opportunity when they had Flash Morgan Webster and they had, and his partner, and they had them as the NAC UK Tag Champions. They're both under 205 Live. They could easily brought them maybe as a showcase if they were still the champions, which, spoiler alert, they're not. Gallus won. I was happy alert. about that. Yeah. But, yeah. but the point is, but the point is, if they had been gone to the UK here, they could have actually had an NXT UK title match with them on the 205 Live show because they're both under 205. 205. That would have made sense for them to have an NXT UK tag title match as well on the brand. But my interesting point I'm thinking of, too, we got the show coming in the UK soon. I'm kind of wondering, if would that be the time where we possibly would get, and what would your thoughts be on this, where we get the match of Leo Rush versus Ian Dra I'm going to say his name wrong. I always think of Drago from Rocky IV, and everybody knows that from the Tea Party. But <laughs> Dragunov in a, for the Cruiserweight Championship, and somehow Dragunov is able to be the one to defeat Leo Rush for the Cruiserweight Championship and bring it to NXT UK while they're in the UK. The fact that Cesaro endorsed Eli Dragunov, okay, that's just something right there. Definitely a possibility. I could see that happening. But I sense that there's one person that will deny that because I sense he's trying to bring him under Imperium. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I sense Alexander Wolf would cost him that opportunity. Yep. But I would love to see that match again because you're showcasing the Cruiserweight title. You're showcasing NXT UK talent. But you're building potential robberies here and also in the storylines. And again, Eli Dragunov, he could compete under 205 Live. It's an entire possibility. So, there, again, with NXT and 205 Live and the fact they're also going over the UK soon because they do that like twice a year, they could do a simply, simple comp simply competition type um, showcase. There's a lot of variables that can really outlook the 205 Live brand and elevate not only its title, but the other titles too. Again, if these three brands come together on a special, like the ultimate takeover and a Worlds Collide beyond. I know they're going to do Worlds Collide like on, during the War of a Weekend. It could be something truly incredible and I think to their strengths. But again, it all comes down to how they pull that off. But with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about one person that we don't know if he's going to be part of it. Mike Kanellis. So Mike Kanellis mm -hmm. recently talked about he has requested his release. And we can only wonder why. So... Chris, I want to ask you, do you think Mike Kanellis should leave WWE, even though he has great showings on 205 Live? What would be next for the guy? Or what do you think 205 Live can do to help the guy? I mean, what what is Mike looking for here? What's wrong? Well, if you're looking Listening to his argument, where we all and I did an episode on, my, on the holiday opinions about this. Well, if you're looking at his uh, his opinions about everything, he's only said he has only wrestled once a week, and he hasn't been on a house show in about a year. Right. Okay. I'm, you know, independent contractor decides their contracts. I know a lot of their contracts, what they, wrestlers have talked about in interviews in the past, are based on when they perform. So if you're not going out there to work, just like me and you, we go to regular jobs, we got to work, or we don't get paid. So even though he's got a downside guarantee, he's not going to be making the money he wants to make to provide for his family. I think at the end of the day, this is all about you making sure he provides for his family. And if he doesn't feel like he's able to provide for his family and he is not happy with what's going on because of that matter, the financial matter, because every t and unfortunately the world works and money is the root of all evil. But unfortunately he's got to be able to take care of his family. As much as I'd love to see Mike Kanellis on 205 Live, as much as I'd love to see him win the Cruiserweight Championship and finally get a shot at it and run with it, if he cannot, if he's not able to provide for his family and take care of everything, 
then if he's able to get released, that's fine. However, you you signed that five year deal yeah. with the company, and you signed it. it what? Okay, earlier this year, right? It was earlier this year we had this conversation. I think we had this conversation. You yeah. signed a contract to stay for five yeah. years. So at that point, you should have addressed, "Hey, I haven't been on any house shows since October." Are you going to put me on house shows under my new contract? You should have worked some stuff out that way before you haven't been on since October. You had the opportunity to get out, and you did. So you had the opportunity to brief your management. Hey, guys, I'm, I need to work more house shows. I need to do this. And at least perform on these house shows. Even if I'm not on TV, at least be on the house show so I can provide for my family. Why didn't you bring those issues up? Because now you're saying it's been a year ago on a house show. You had the opportunity back a few months ago for you still to have that taken care of. Right. Uh, boy, the, the Skype's being a real pain. Sorry, folks. Anyway, yeah, and, and W said that, look, if you don't like it, we're just going to give you the Leo Rush treatment until you play nice. We all saw how long that took, and Leo Rush was even questioning his future. So I hope that things do work out for Mike Canella. That, I just want to bring that. That's all I got to say about that. And as far as, like I said, uh, money and creativity goes and stuff like that, at least 205 Live gives everybody their own character and their own platform to express themselves. Mike should also figure about the fact competing on 205 Live at least gives them something, while some people have nothing if they're lucky main events. you got to figure out how vast this roster is. Over 70 freaking people. How many people do you expect to see every week on television? How many people do you see actually involved in storylines? How many people do you see going beyond the 21st cemetery? That's still a thing. Or just being a body at a lumberjack match, okay? you got to figure about what you have to do to make yourself be known if WWE is not going to do it. There's people that have used different outlets, including the Internet, Zack Ryder, that used it to help elevate themselves until WWE can that long island nicely story, but I digress. But hey, Kurt and him, they have their own podcast. You signed it, you're going to have to figure out your own stuff. It's as simple as that, unfortunately. This is the way WWE works. Yep. All right. Is there anything else in your mind, Chris, you want to talk about tonight on Simple Stances? No, I think I've covered everything I had on top of my head tonight, and you brought up the Mike Canellas things. That was the last thing I was going to discuss about. But we've got, I think we got everything covered tonight, so I think all we got or today. So I think all we got left is what our matches are, our next matches are, and we can call it a day. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and do that. I believe it's number fourteen now. We're getting in the thick of things. Yeah. So, with that being said, here's Mays. What's your number fourteen on recommended matches to watch from the Two Hundred Five Live brand? Okay, now. Just be honest, y'all. I can't remember the exact date. I know it was in 2017 because some reason it blanked out of me, but it's Lynch Dorado versus Tajiri. Tajiri had come back to actually debuted in 205 Live in January 2017. Uh, Brian Kendrick came out there. He spit green mist at his face at that point. They set a uh, Then later on, it was the match with Lynch Dorado and Tajiri, which was a really good match. I thought it was a really entertaining match. And yet again, and yet again, you had, um, you know what? I just fucking Fox. butchered that it's shit. I did. I meant to say, I meant to say to Brian Kent. No, dude, we're gonna edit that. Dude, anyway, so and yeah, no we can way, keep folks. it. I ain't worried about. It. We're, we're but people. Anyway, we're so, our, but my bad. Go ahead. You're fine. Don't worry about it. I'm just gonna keep it in. Everyone makes mistakes. So, are you talking yeah, about? I, know. I meant to say it was Lynch Dorado versus the Brian Kendrick because yeah, Jerry came out at the end of the match after the match and spit green mist back at his face again. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I thought that was a really good match between the Brian Kendrick and Lynch Dorado. And Lynch Dorado. They were having that storyline going on at the time as well, so it was really a great match. It was a great way to check it out. And then afterwards with the Jerry, we thought we were going to get to Jerry versus the Brian Kendrick, and unfortunately with the Jerry, he got injured and then also when Dodie thought he was too old and then he never, never met, they never finished culminating that match so it was one of those matches I would have loved to re-see and again I would have loved to see was Brian Kendrick with Jerry in 205 Live but it didn't happen that way but that's my number 14 and boy did I botch it up because I had Jerry on my brain so that really <laughs> botched it up oh well eh, it what are you gonna do? we're only human after all Okay, so as you all know, I went a lot in chronological because this is the first time in my life I've ever made a list on anything. Jericho beat me to it. Anyway, so I think about all the cruiserweights. I look at everybody as 
a single person. Though many of these people have been in random best fellow tag teams or tag team fashion since that was a one or some point later or six men show kids that have closed rivalries. This is not one of them though. This is a simple one on one feud that stems from the opportunist taking an opportunity and somebody who's trying to get rid of the stink of his only cruiserweight title reign after he tried to go through this tournament and still lost. Thanks, Maria. My number 14 is actually Mike Canales versus Akira Tozawa from April 2nd, 2019, the go-home show of 205 Live into WrestleMania. This match was brought on after the two previously had a one-on-one encounter that gave Mike Canales mm-hmm. and Trivia controversial standings with the help of his support, his life partner, Maria Canales. And, of course, Nasha McGinn is all over that in the most positive way. That's the power of love leading Mike to victory. Leading him to victory, she blatantly got involved. Oh, it's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. It's not a curious fault that he got blindly distracted by Maria. I mean, wouldn't you? Look at her dazzling beauty. I miss those two on commentary. And, of course, Vic Joseph was the play-by-play guy. And it continued here. It was the commentary team of Vic Joseph and English, Nigel McGinnis. And these two had an incredible one on bout. But Akira Doza, he put things into his favor this match for bringing out his partner, friend, training buddy, Brian with a plan, the Brian Kendrick. And these two, Mike Knuth, Akira Doza, they wailed into each other. This is one of my favorite, like, feuds recently from 205 Live. This was just a basic, straightforward wrestling match, too. A statement match, per se, to see who could possibly face the winner of Buddy Murray versus Tony Nese after WrestleMania, as we found out way later. But these two rolled into each other. Clotheslines, octopuses, there was Mike Canella showing aggression and frustration. Things that benefit him, things that have also destroyed him. He gave three standing vertical suplexes, and these two exchanged submission holds, rest holds. There was a great exchange towards the end where basically we got chops, my favorite move from Akira Ozawa as he channeled his inner Bushido fighting spirit. They got jab. And then he freaking gets a big boot. And then we get another big boot. Then a super kick from Mike Canellas. Then a spinning roundhouse kick. There was another crazy bunch of crazy spots for this match, too, including Mike Canellas demonstrating how smart he knows Kill Dozawa after countering and her Karana attempt into a wicked power bomb. And later on, he has one of the best spine busters I have seen in WWE since freaking Bobby Roode. Yes, I still call him Bobby Roode. He's glorious. Anyway, though, going towards the end of the match, Akil Dazawa, he pulls out a snap German suplex out of nowhere. And at one point, um, they go out to the outside of the ring. Akira gets laid out with a draping uh, netbreaker from the barricade and also pulls a cheap shot on D. Brian Kendrick, taking him out of play. While Maria is just looking on, all and behold, there were points in this match with so many near falls where Mike was about to implore Maria's like, stay on him, be aggressive, be mm. aggressive. In the end, though, they try to pull out similar tatters from the last match, though, with a roll through. Tried to hold the ropes, couldn't, but Maria reached out her hands and tried, the power of love leads me to victory. No, the Brian Kendrick in consciousness and prevented that from happening, giving the ref just the right amount of acknowledgement to notice, hey, you can't do that, you're cheating. Only for Akira Zawa to roll up Mike and get the one, two, three, legitimately clean in the ring, though Nigel, he keeps saying, what was that? What is this? And this, of course, continued later on in the match. I think I talked about before, or may not have, but I might later. But that's all I got for now. My match, number 14, Mike Canales, Akira Dozawa, April 2nd, 2019. The go-home episode of 205 Live as they were heading into WrestleMania. And both men trying to prove a point while Mike was still, 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 still trying to gain some respect and the opportunities he deserved. And he still feels like he hasn't gotten that to this day. And with the way he feels now... Who knows what that's going to lead to. Mm. All right. But with that, we are done here for today, actually. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in, of course, to Hashtag 205 Matters, new and return. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate the skeptics, the critics, the haters, the lovers, the believers. Bring it on. I'm all about just bringing you a view in wrestling. You don't have to agree with it. Just enjoy it or go away. (laughs) With that being said, I take no BS from anybody, people. Get that for your heads. And, and by the way, uh, disclaimer, if I do freaking predictions on blood money, you thought I was a little bit spiteful now, you wait and fucking see. But I digress. Anyway, Chris, <laughs> until next time, always a pleasure, sir. Where can people find you? Anything you want to plug? <laughs> uh, 
you can find me on you can find me on Facebook at Christopher Mace. You can find me on Twitter at Christopher Mace. Uh, you can follow, you can support go support my YouTube channel the Holiday Christopher Mace. I thank everybody for the six two subscribers I've gotten so far. I'm humbled and honored by that. That's incredible. Uh, like I said, just have a lot of basic holiday opinions, pretty much just thoughts of what's going on in wrestling. Then I have my predictions for the NX team. Uh, recent one was Impact, because like I said, I like to be competitive with no one needs some of these predictions. So definitely Impact, Bound for Glory is tonight, folks. So like I said, if you haven't seen Impact in a while, you're going to be missing a great pay-per-view if you don't see it. Just telling you right now. <laughs> I know you do. Um and like I said, uh, pretty much if you want to support everybody else from the NX team, you can always visit my YouTube channel. You can go to the wrestling content list. You'll see all the newest episodes of everybody's shows, the NXT party, and it, what's NXT Live, 205 Live Matters, New G's Wrestling Blog, James and Owen's Rundown Show, everything. You can see all the lists of everything of the newest episodes. You can just click on it. It'll take you right to their video, to their channel, and you can like, share, and subscribe that way, too. So instead of me trying to learn everybody's YouTube channel names, because that would take me forever. Yep. So... Anyways, that's pretty much all I got to plug today. And last, and also, we also have our Facebook page, 205 Live Matters. If you'd like to join that Facebook page, just go ahead and go ahead and join the group and be and just let's talk about some cruiserweight wrestling on that page and there's two other pages you could also follow you can also follow the aw nation page that good brother chris part of they got over 1600 people now so that's incredible and then um you could also follow arm bar capital a r m b a r exclamation point. point they got 88 right now but like i said they got 88 members that are active and always talk about wrestling so if you're not active Poof, they're going to kick you out. So, got to be active in that group. And, you can't be and, a Brock Lesnar. Yes, yeah, don't be a Brock Lesnar. Don't, I don't want to say be a Roman Reigns either. That wouldn't probably oh. sound right. But, anyway, so, like I said, that's all I got to plug today. It's been entertaining being outside. Maybe I should not do these outside so much anymore. Between, the my, rants, my, brain. between my rants, my main roster of hatred, your glitching, and uh, the video threw out the thing. <laughs> People are going to be all over this shit. Bring it, folks. Anyway, they, for those that do enjoy what we do. NWA Power Episode 2. <laughs> that was That was off. I, I don't care. All it is is just wrestling. That's what it is. We don't mm -hmm. get to do this. We just do this because we love wrestling. And speaking of which, yes. you want more about me, know this. And no, I'm not always in a suit, okay? I came home from morning service, and may the Lord forgive me for my outrage. But again, wrestling, I'm going to be real. I'm not fake, WWE. But I digress. Anyway, if you want to know more about me, know this. I'm just a simple man. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I am a lifelong fan of wrestling. So if you want to follow me and talk anything wrestling, WM Beyond, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Be of Honor, All Elite Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, Independent Wrestling, Sport Fire Wrestling, folks, then follow me on Twitter. NoDQ.com forward slash Noah takes my Twitter page. I have nearly 1,900 followers after just being over a year in Twitter. So shout out to everybody I've come to know and learn about in the Twitterverse a.k.a. wrestling community and beyond. Whether you're a good hearted individual in life, know something about wrestling, like to talk wrestling, or something in between, I don't judge. And I appreciate all of you. And also, follow my simple YouTube channel here at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash noah fossil 210. You'll find all sorts of wrestling content, uh, predictions, takeaways, previews, reviews, simple takes, podcasts, rants, and of course, at the heart of it, my series, hashtag 205 Life Matters. All in neat, organized playlists for you, new content every week. Shout out to the 93 subscribers I got, as well as the over 4,000 views. Being on YouTube now for literally a year. It has been one year now since I've had a YouTube channel. Started last year with uh, predictions on W Evolution. They should have fucking brought that show back. Fuck blood money, but I digress. And ever since then, mm -hmm. and I love it. And based on where the W is going, I might reshape it more. We'll see. But also, if you haven't already, go check out my Bound for Glory predictions, and I will be doing predictions with Team ADQ in the upcoming future on, and not limited to, AEW Full Gear, NWA Power, New Japan Pro Wrestling Power League, and so much more. Or Power Struggle, excuse me. Anyway, support NoDQ. They're the reason I'm in YouTube. Forever indebted to the NoDQ family, Galaxy, Team NoDQ, Team ADQ, the NoDQ NX team, all the people I've come to know in NoDQ Galaxy, limited, but not mm. limited to, Michael, Ken, Nick, Zach, there's like 50 people I could think of, but nah, I don't have time to name off the top of my head. And also, of course, Aaron Riff. So go buy something. Do it. 
Nodicular.com forward slash merch. Find what fits you. Yeah, take that, WWE. And find what works for you, whether it's mug, tapestry, you name it. I don't think they have notebooks or yet. I don't think the pins are on the website yet, but the pins are pretty cool. I got like five of them. And go follow our social media platforms. Your opinions matter. There's a comment section and everything at the official website. Polls, comms, mean gifts, reviews, recaps, sexy female picks. Year-end awards, it's there. It's wrestling, primarily WWE, with a little bit of influence from independent wrestling, primarily AEW. I'm all over YouTube talking about wrestling. Go follow Neil and Tim at Reality, where I do a Wednesday Night War roundup every week, where we discuss, compare, contrast, review, assess, and what we expect from both AEW and NXT every week. I'm now involved on Facebook Live. I'll be in a wrestling discussion over the Wednesday Night War uh, next week in NXT Elite, so stay tuned for that. Thanks, Gary Prodis. Awesome person. And as always, I like yep, to... Yeah, thanks, Gary, for letting me be on the show, too, by the way. I forgot. I wanted to do shout-out to him because he's going to be, hopefully, next couple weeks doing a holiday breakup. So, with me, so I can't wait for that. So Yeah, I've been, I've been on your stuff. I've been with Cindy, good brother Chris. I've been with Colin, Stefan, Jerry. Heck, I remember the first time I was even in a freaking OTQ video was a panel on pay-per-views, the then and the now, with uh, Aaron uh, to Virtue. Shout-out to the... Uh, Garf Uncle to my Simon, and uh, basically, what was the other one? Oh, Chris Cass, who's always busy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, as always, I like to close. Support your wrestling albums when we get small, and let's keep curling this incredible, diverse, unique, elite, vocal, real wrestling community together. Simple as that. With that, we are officially done here. Thank you so much for tuning in for the first time or continuing. Like, share, subscribe, comment, tell a friend, hit that bell, know when the next video is going to go live, either on NodiQ's channel or my channel. And also, just tell your friends, go enjoy some wrestling, go talk about wrestling, go find someone to rant about in wrestling. Just make wrestling your own and have fun with it. And until next time, enjoy life, take care of your family, tomorrow's never guaranteed, treasure the moments you have, look at the good, don't live for the bad, don't let the bad control you or define you. And until the next video, from the holiday Chris Mace and the simple man here, Noah Foster, styling and profiling. Actually, this suit's only 60 bucks. I got a cheaper suit than CM Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all, far and wide, outside YouTube and ODQ and beyond and in within, have a wonderful day. Have a good one, y'all. And remember, and I take this to the grave, 205 Live, more than ever, matters. Always. In I feel like Funaki would agree with me. SmackDown's number one. <laughs> yes. Bye, everybody. <laughs>